and to grab the wealth that should belong as of right to their peoples. And now we move on to our first speaker, and I'm delighted to call Dr. Mahmoud Al-Fadan, who's going to talk about the expression, freedom of expression and the attacks on the media. Dr. Al-Fadan. emergency specialist who have been working in emergency uh, department in Salmania Medical Complex for about uh, 12 years until uh, the hospital was uh, seized and occupied by the military forces uh, after the announcing the martial law and invasion of Saudi troops in Bahrain. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak out about what happened and would like to thank the audience. Uh, if anyone, anybody wants to talk about the uh, Bahrain uh, revolution, I think uh, nobody will ignore the Pearl roundabout and nobody will ignore what happened as well in Salmania Medical Complex. And um, I would like to uh, enlighten you about why, why the, the medic, medics has been targeted and what in which way they, they have been targeted. Why they have been targeted, I think, um, first of all, f for all of us here, anybody will, when he wants to get a credible source, he will look for, a, uh, for the uh, credible source like, uh, let's say, about the news or uh, media. He will look, for example, for BBC or CNN or, or anywhere where it is credible. So. The medical personnel and medics were the credible sources for the information, credible sources for the numbers of uh, injured protesters, the type of injured injuries, and the place where they got all the information uh, of what happened for the protesters and, uh, uh, and the injured uh, persons. Second thing that we are, as a medics, we are the first witnesses. And I think the regime, they put in their mind that there might be a time where justice will come, and we are the first witnesses. So we, they, they put in their mind to destroy all the ev evidence about the crimes and about the events. Uh, on, on 16 of March, I uh, remember uh, the day where they attacked the roundabout, uh, it was the early morning, and we were there in the hospital. And well, at the time of the uh, at the time of attacking the roundabout, uh, they also uh, seized the hospital, and many tanks and military forces uh, attacked the hospital, and they closed all the mail gates. Uh, there was no uh, single patient or single injured protester allowed to enter the hospital. Uh, there was no single ambulance were allowed to uh, go out and uh, bring any single injured patient from the roundabout. Though we heard the news while we are in the hospital, we were hearing the news like other people outside the hospital, hearing that there was um, multi, multi, multiple injuries around uh, the country and mainly in the site of the roundabout. Well, that's what exactly, I, I would not take a long time to describe in details what happened because most of us can find the information through the Googles and through the YouTubes where we can see how the, how the medical personnel were attacked by different type of abuses and uh, from the minor to the major, from the verbal to the physical abuse. I am one of those who has been uh, also targeted uh, during my uh, stay on the, uh, on the on call night before, after, the, after the martial law. Uh, I still remember the day where the mask people attacked the hostels where the where the doctors uh, resting at, at night, where they are at co uh, on call, uh, I was beating, and that's what made me think, actually, how what will happen if 
a doctor has been beaten in the hospital. What will happen inside the prison? What will happen if they detain me where nobody can listen to my screams or can see what's happening to me? So from that point, I decided uh, to leave the country and to get out with my family. Uh, and that happened to many families and to many medical personnel. Unfortunately, many of our, our colleagues were arrested, uh, tortured, uh, and uh, the uh, Basioni Committee also, uh, when they uh, started their work, they documented the multi-abuse and many type of uh, human rights violation against our medics. So what is the consequences of this? Unfortunately, the, the targeting still continues uh, by media, by the pro, uh, which are pro government, uh, unfortunately, pro government uh, medics, which they, until now, until today, they still calling us or calling our colleagues as a perpetrator of the country, and uh, and still they are uh, citing and asking for. Uh, to apply even the, the uh, even apply the the the, the, the brutal uh, uh, rules uh, on on my colleagues, I can just will show you some of the some of the things which has been written in the media against our people and from the from the pro government uh, unfortunately pro government uh, medical uh, doctor who said once. On, on the on the Twitter, it takes only F-16 to clear all the dirt in the villages. So we have a lot of F-16, but we are nice. That's on the Twitter. The other thing, actually we are too nice, but if Shove comes to push, then only one F-16 will do the whole job. We are strong. And this is an emergency consultant in Bahrain who is treating people, you, who are supposed to treat people. Uh, the issue still continues, by the way, and it's not stopped. Uh, and until last week, still the same person or the same people, they still talk about people. They put the photos of our medical personnel where they demonstrated, and they nominate them as, uh, as the perpetrator, and they are the people, the occupation of Salmania Medical Center by pro-Iran terrorist and if you if you see the photo you will see which people are protesting they are they are just the medics they are the civilian which they are protesting to demand for the patient rights not for their rights they are protesting for the rights of providing the uh, right uh, medical services they sometimes they are compl or the government uh, complaining that the, the medics, or we as a, as a medical personnel, we were involved in politics and we started to demonstrate in the hospital. And that's not true. We, we just, we, we protested, yes. We protested from the 17th of uh, uh, February 2011, where that, that day, on that day exactly, the ambulances were prevented uh, to attend the injured uh, protesters in the Pearl Rando. This is before also the, the Saudi invasion and before the martial lowers were, were announced. So from that day we started to uh, asking and uh, protesting and it was not during our work time as well. It was after our working time. I remember very well we started to demonstrate after three o'clock in the evening time where the, uh, most of our work has been done and most of the people which they are on call, they stay in the hospital. Uh, the consequences of that and is uh, one of the major things that this prevented people from attending the hospital to be treated. Many people now and many, many, many demonstrators, uh, unfortunately, they are not attending the hospital to get treated because of fear uh, of arrest and fear of interrogation. And that led to many complications, many disabilities. Uh, unfortunately, as we know, uh, people, the, 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 the normal people would not differentiate between the, the major trauma, the critical trauma, and the simple trauma. So they can't advise 
which person can be taken to the hospital, which not. We personally always prefer that even if uh, the, the, the protester with the severe injury get arrested, but he get treated, it's preferred to, be to, to, to get to the hospital. So that's one of the major problems which, which is facing uh, our people or our demonstrators in, in Bahrain. We hope, uh, we hope that one day this will get to end and uh, some, up to the some points where, where people can get their rights and, uh, and getting their normal treatment or uh, uh, medical uh, care where we're supposed to be uh, done and, and get it in such a country like my country, where an oil rich country. Uh, that's what, uh, briefly speaking, about what's happening. And until now, if, if we also will speak about what's happening now, that, that most of our medical uh, personnel, they are still, until today, they are being targeted and forced to leave uh, the government section and uh, to attend the private or to leave the country and start to work in other either the neighborhood countries like, uh, like uh, Gulf countries. And it is also impossible now because there is a lot of uh, barriers and instruction from the government itself for the GCC government not to allow these uh, medics to get work in such countries like uh, GCC country. And personally, I have friends also, which they, their, their contracts has been uh, uh, determined uh, by the advice of the government from some of our uh, neighborhood countries. Uh, that's uh, what I have now. And any questions or anything you want to ask or I can answer? Thank you very much, Dr. al I, I think we, we'll perhaps need to <laughs> leave the questions until, until the end of the set speeches. But I must say that the medics have paid a heavy price for their uh, temerity in peacefully protesting. Uh, an activity that would be perfectly ordinary in any other country, uh, but not in Bahrain. And it's, it's a tragedy for the health services of Bahrain that so many able people have been sacked and forced into exile. And I must say, um, the situation of the medics is a vivid example of the attitude of the government to any form of peaceful activity. And, and we commend them for their t uh, courage in speaking out and in upholding the principle that every doctor has to undertake, which is to treat people irrespective of their political or religious affiliation. So thank you very much, Dr. Alfaro. And we have